All right. Well, uh, first off, thank you to Trade Ideas for hosting this webinar. And I uh, always just want to show your appreciation, especially for everyone who's attending right now. I just want to say thank you guys for taking the time out of your day and uh, listening to Stock Trading Psychology. Uh, so Stock Trading Psychology obviously is the topic we are going to be talking about today. Uh, if you were here for my last webinar, I briefly talked on it and a lot of traders wanted to hear more about it. So this is why I'm really focusing it on our main you know, topic on today's webinar. And it's something that is really surpassed a lot of the times. So you can buy a DVD, you can buy a lot of different schooling talking about stock trading, but stock psychology is something that gets very overlooked. And to me personally, it's one of my favorite topics I wanna look at. Uh, I think it's very interesting, and when you break it down, it really helps you understand what the market's going to do. Everyone wants to be a day trader for what reason? You wanna make money. How can you make money? Is by predicting the stock market. That could be through different chart patterns, that could be through looking at you know the, the press releases and different indicators, but the main thing, I believe, is the psychology. So that's what I really wanna break down today. So what is psychology? Psychology, the actual definition, is the scientific study of the human mind and its functions, especially those affecting behavior in a given context. Now, most of you guys, you may have had a psychology class back in high school or back in college. You know, that's when I had uh, my psychology classes way back in high school, way back in college, uh, and I never thought I would actually apply it to act you know stock trading. And it's really funny that. Uh, back in college, I never really expected myself to be a full-time stock trader. I went in freshman year to, you know, first off doing criminal justice before I switched over to business um, and really, you know, got super involved in stock trading. But, you know, taking psychology classes, it did help me a lot because it made me understand, you know, what other people, uh, how they think and, you know, how they uh, thought and how they process this different situations. Now, basically, every single stock trade, when you think about it, is a problem. It's saying, hey, you know, how are we going to come to an actual solution? How are we going to profit? How you know we're we're about to invest our money into this play? How are we going to come out on top? And that's what it's really about. So the main thing I just want you guys to understand of course if you guys don't know what psychology is it's basically understanding the human mind now in the stock trading uh, perspective it's understanding other people so penny stocks uh, psychology and penny stocks versus blue chip stocks these are two completely different worlds and I want to make sure you guys understand that before I get any farther uh, a lot of these penny stocks we are going to play they are going to be very low priced when you play a blue chip stock you know such as Apple or Netflix that could be a hundred dollars per share personally what I like to play is anything between 75 cents up to ten dollars now again I usually don't play any sort of the OTC world which is you know sometimes you know sub penny uh, one cent, maybe two cents, those get a little too crazy. Those are a little too, you know, pumpy dumpy, a little too, you know, not really my favorite, uh, you know, cup of tea right there. So I personally stick with stocks between the 75 cent range and the one dollar range. So everything that I'm going to be talking about today, it is going to apply to that price range. So I just want to make sure that you guys understand that because penny stocks, guys, two completely different worlds. Penny stocks are sometimes manipulated. Uh, and that's the second point I want to go over right now. Now, when I say that, that could immediately sound like a bad thing, but, uh, and it's not always a bad thing. You know, there could be, of course, you know, some sort of pump and dumps, which we've all heard of, which we've all experienced before in this penny stock market, uh, but in a, you know, Apple situation or a Netflix situation, there's not going to be any sort of pump and dumps. Those stocks have way too much, you know, volume. They have way too much credibility behind it to ever get manipulated. But these little penny stocks, guys, they are so little that if someone with a large following possibly buys the stock, you know, we could see a lot of majority come in and buy after it, and that's going to move it up which could help us because we know there's going to be a following or it could hurt us as well if we don't know that and the stock turns around again people are buying these stocks because maybe their father you know their leader is you know buying a stock or maybe they're getting manipulated because there's an email blast going off uh, and all these traders are saying oh wow you know I got an email saying this stocks going to go up everyone's going to start buying it and you know that may be the reason why the stocks getting going up but it's manipulated I could send out you know a thousand emails about Apple saying it's going to go up you know that's not going to change that price at all um, so basically the main thing I want you guys to just focus right here before we really get started is that psychology and penny stocks is completely different than facing a blue chip stock 
When I talk about psychology in the stock market, hype is the number one thing I want. I want to find volume. You know, volume is everything in the market. Basically, my saying, if you guys even, if you guys have heard of Duckmart Trades or you guys have been in my chat room before, what I basically say every single day is volume equals activity, activity equals profit. So my whole psych, you know, psychological pro uh, process is figuring out where is the volume going to be. Uh, what is volume if you do not know? Volume in the context of a single uh, stock trading on a stock exchange, the volume is commonly reported as the number of shares that changed hands during a given day. The average volume of the security over a longer period of time is the total amount traded in that period divided by the length of the period. Basically, guys, volume in simple terms, I love breaking things down as simple as possible, is just saying, you know, how many times has that stock been traded, you know, through a uh, thrown, you know, share. So if we have, you know, people buying and selling thousands of shares, the more volume we have, the more activity is going to be moving. The stock that has the most activity is a stock we can make the most profit on. So if a stock isn't moving, what's the point of playing it? Because I have people come up to me all the time to say, hey, uh, you know, Deckmark, can we go ahead and buy this stock? And I say, hey, there's no volume. Uh, you know, why would we play a stock that isn't moving at all? So when I'm looking at the psychology and I'm looking into, you know, the, the psychology behind penny stocks, I'm looking into the pure fact of the volume behind it. You know, where is the volume going to move in? Where is the volume going to push through? And if I can find where that volume is going to be, I'm going to be able to make a profit because that volume is going to make that stock active. And if that stock is active, it's going to be moving either up or down. And when it's going up or down, I can either be buying or I can either be shorting that play. So how do we apply psychology to stock trading? I know I'm talking about uh, psychology a lot, but how am I you know, applying this now? And I'm going to go into a lot of different reasonings and I'm going to go into a lot of different examples to really help you guys as much as I can here. Uh, but the main thing I want to talk about, guys, is the mob. And I talked about this a little bit on my last webinar. And I want to break down what the mob is. So the mob, I basically say, is the majority of traders. Uh, when you think of penny stock trading, uh, and the true fact is right here, 80% of first year day traders will fail. Now that's a real a real fact guys. You know, not everyone's going to succeed in, you know, stock trading. Just like, you know, everyone's not going to make it to the NBA. Not everyone's going to make it to the NFL. People who aren't going to work hard enough to learn the fundamentals of stock trading guys are going to fail. Uh, so basically what I do is I categorize or categorize every of that 80% I put them in a majority called the mob. Now, what is the mob? The mob is basically that group of people that are always showing up are basically always following where that hype is going to be. Uh, so when you see a stock, let's say, take on off, you might see it start moving up you know, a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit more, and then all of a sudden it rips. That's because the mob showed up. The mob is basically that uneducated group of traders that are just chasing stocks all the time. Uh, and I know all you guys probably know what I'm talking about. You know, a stock just rips and then all of a sudden it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And then finally it dumps on off. What you have to understand about the penny stock market, guys, is that it's super trendy. It's like a whole bunch of, you know, us traders, guys, if you want to think about it this way, it's like we're a whole bunch of girls in high school just following like the hottest trend. And basically this stock at the moment could be the hottest trend. So it starts moving on up and then all the whole mob's like, oh, this is what I want to be in. This is where the money's at. So they start moving on up. All psychology comes in. That trader's saying this is where the money is at. Uh, I'm going to buy this. Uh, that 80% basically who chase stocks are going to push it up. If you're in beforehand, if you're in before the mob, you're going to be making money. So the main thing when I start trading my stocks, guys, is understanding the mob and uh, trying to figure out what the mob is going to do. That brings me to my second point right here that says people move stocks. They do not move themselves. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize. You know, you look at a chart and you say to yourself, okay, this stock is looking like this, um, you know, going up and down in some certain way. When you look at a stock, you really don't understand, you know, exactly why it may have the certain pattern it has, which is perfectly understandable and it's perfectly okay. But what I want you to understand is that Stocks, guys, are not living creatures. It's not, you know, an animal. It's not a lion. It's not going to do whatever it wants. People are the ones who are buying that stock to move it on up. People are the ones that are selling the stocks to move them on down. So if I can understand the majority of people, the mob that are buying that stock to move it up or to be selling it to moving on down, I'm going to be able to predict the market. And, but, you know, so now we're all kind of getting on the same page here and we're going to get into how to have strategies to figure that out. So, you know, different things. It's, you know, know where the hype is. And a very good exercise or something that I like to do every single morning is think outside yourself. Uh, but what 
you know, think of what others are thinking, you know, what will others do? So I'm basically thinking to myself every single day, you know, what is that 80% going to do? Where's the mob going to show up at? Uh, if I get on this play, you know, am I overthinking it. It, it sometimes traders guys we think too much into certain plays we'll say okay you know what this stock looks good you know this indicator is set up so nicely this indicator is set up so nicely you know yada 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 and uh, we miss the hottest play when we when the hottest play was really in front of us the whole time you know but we yeah. just yeah I was gonna say that I you know when I hear that and by the way guys it's Dan I'm kind of uh, listening in and contributing when I can um, I mean, you're you're so hot on one of the most critical emotional components, you know. And I love, you know, the golf analogy that I use in our uh, trading room as well. And I talk about it on Twitter. That in golf, it's called paralysis by analysis. But you can translate it to anything that anybody does at a high level what you find out is that they're never thinking about the process of the doing, they're simply in the zone of doing. You know, when you make a great shot, it's great. You didn't like, you know, go, okay, here we go, time to make the great shot and everything's working, for, you know, and but in stocks, we, we often hear, I need this SMA, I need that SMA, I need the RSI, I need the pitchfork of this guy and that guy and I've, often said to people that your eyes can tell you everything that you need to know. There isn't one element of squiggly line of anything that could mathematically, if you really threw the math math of and mass of big data behind it, that would tell you some squiggly line is better than some other. It's a comfort that we get. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that because over practice, right, you can say, I have developed a feel for, let's say, the 20-day or the 50-day or the 200-day. I think that's where those numbers come from. They're like levels of comfort that people have, you know, seen something happen and then they react to it. But the truth of the matter is you have to not analyze at the point of the action. All that analysis has to be in the past and you must jump into the moment of the trade and press the go button. And I will still say that the pressing the go button through all the things you just discussed and all the things that then I subsequently babbled about um, are the biggest barrier to success because the fear of the entry creates that hesitation that then creates a mindset that's not easy to shift off. It's kind of like, you know, if you eat a lot of potato chips, it's hard to stop because they keep calling. And they're tasty. And they're, they're, because they're tasty, they keep calling. And so, but fear is the same way. Like you hesitate on one, the next one you look at, the first thing you're going to be reminded of is that hesitation versus, as you and I both know, to you know it feels great to get in a trade and have it work. That's probably one of the best feelings you can get, and it's kind of like crushing a golf drive or you know, jumping on a surfboard and catching a wave, it's that same feeling. You feel it, you pick the spot, boom, and it happens to work out. That's the best feeling, and you know that every time you did that, it was never one of those ones where you're like, let me think about this for a while. I mean, that's just not how it happens, right? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly yeah. what you mean, and that's how sometimes you go on really hot streaks. Um, you know, you're doing well, you're feeling good, you're sitting down, you're being confident, uh, being, you know, confident and winning, you know, just as Dan was saying, when you start winning, you know, it's contagious, you start getting very happy and you go in your next trade very happy, very confident, it's like uh, everything else, you know, you start shooting basketball hoops, sometimes you get hot because you're going to be confident, um, you know, it's, it's contagious, and that's what you guys have to do, which is kind of why I'm going into this whole article or this whole webinar right now is just in the pure fact, I want you guys to sit down every single day with confidence. And it's something that's so overlooked. And uh, that's why I sit every single day. I sit down uh, at my chair at like 7 in the morning. I get ready for pre-market scans. Right when I start talking in my chat room, you know, I'm usually super confident. I'm like, guys, let's go, I got, go out and get it. It's because every day is a new day. It's like every day is a new blank canvas. Yesterday, you can win or lose. Brand new setup today, but you got to go in with the right mindset. And if you don't go in with the right mindset, that's when you're going to be, you know, having some trouble. And I've worked with negative traders before that they're just like, hey, Deck, like I'm down right now. Uh, I've lost the last 
next three days, you know, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I should just give up. And you know what? That's just going to lead to more negative trading in your end. Sit down with confidence. Again, everything I do, guys, I wouldn't do stock trading if I didn't enjoy it. I wouldn't do stock trading if I didn't have fun with that as well. I love stock trading. It's a good time. I get to make some money. You get to laugh a little bit uh, and then uh, just move on to my next play. So it's really coming down to about studying. And yeah, Dan. There, I mean, as you're talking about confidence, I wanted to, I mean, because I know you're about to shift to the next topic, but I wanted to finish that off on one of the best things I've ever, ever heard because I mean, everyone knows that Jack Nicholas is like one of the, well, probably the best golfer on the planet. He has the most majors. And he was talking about exactly what you were talking about. Like, how does he win so much? And he talks about, number one, visualization. Every shot he takes, he sees before he does it. I try to do that with trades. It's the same thing. It's not about, like, magic of trying to predict the future, but you're like, okay, you're seeing a flow of psychological supply and demand. Visualize where that flow will go. I try to picture where I see the chart going. So that's one thing that's very similar. But then there was this little interview, and I forgot which like show I was watching. It was like on Faraday or something about golf. I was watching it, and they were talking about this instance where Jack hit a bad shot, and somebody uh, – went right up to him afterwards and they said, so Jack, what happened there on 13? And he's like, what happened there? And then and they go, you hit that shank. And he goes, no, I didn't. You know, he knew that he doesn't dwell on the negative. Like, you know, that, hey, Sean, I'm losing or, man, I just can't win. It's kind of funny because it's who do you give voice to in your mind ultimately plays such a big role of what happens to you and who's in charge it's really the same shit that tony robbins says you know it's how you visualize yourself and what you give voice to becomes who you are you have to say to yourself i know i can do it i trust myself all that kind of self-help bullshit that isn't kind of bullshit you have to practice it because people take for granted how hard it is to do but uh jack nicholas did it you know that way like he didn't even see the bad trades mm -hmm. yeah I, I know exactly what you mean by that. And it's, it comes down to, of course, being confident with yourself. Uh, but exactly as like the topic I'm moving on to is also, uh, you know, confidence in yourself is one sort of psychology that all you guys should obviously have. But, you know, what I'm applying, you know, my stock trading is, you know, kind of thinking outside ourselves and basically going back down to this topic of the mob. So uh, obviously we need to have confidence in ourselves. But when I'm talking about psychology and right now at the moment, I do want to focus on uh, right now thinking about others. And basically what I'm saying at this bottom point right here, you know, think outside yourself, but what others are thinking. So basically I could sit down and I can overanalyze a lot of stuff. Um, and I do want to talk about indicators, as Dan brought up before. He was talking about some different indicators. And I do want to talk about indicators a little bit later on, how they can help you with your stock trading psychology. Uh, but I also want to, you know, I, I can also go into the pros and cons. But what I'm saying here is think outside yourself or how others are going to be thinking. And that could be the plain fact of, you know, certain hype or a certain chart pattern or a certain press release. It's coming down to basically us being smarter than the mob, us being smarter than that 80% that are going to fail. Because you know what? What happens? Why do people fail? Why are they in the 80%? Because they're probably going into entries late. They're probably buying stocks that are spiking for, you know, whatever reason. They're hopping into them. They're chasing and they end up losing. But you know what? They're buying and pushing up someone else's profits even more. That's the mob. So people move stocks. They do not move themselves. If you understand other people, you are going to understand where the stocks are going to be going. You can ultimately predict the stock market. And I think that's the coolest thing out there, honestly. I think it's so cool that people are like, how do you know that you know the stock's going to rip? Uh, personally, if you guys don't know, I have an 80% win rate. Usually I'll win four to five days, um, and if you guys go to uh, my website, Deckmar Trades, of course, you guys could see that uh, on my track record that I have an 80% win rate, um, and it's really because not of me studying patterns. Well, I, obviously I study patterns and I study a lot of stuff, but a huge part of it is understanding what other traders are going to do, what the mob is going to do. That 80% of people that are probably going to fail but are going to push up other people's profits because they're coming late into place. So if we understand the mob, we are going to be able to uh, figure out exactly what the market's going to do. So how can we understand the mob? Where are we going to be be able to say to ourselves, where's the mob going to be moving in? Well, honestly, the mob is going to be moving in where the hype is. So look for the hype. 
when I'm talking about this, guys, you know, look for the hype. Uh, what looks exciting? It, we're in a penny stock world, guys. We're in basically dreamland. Uh, you know, people come down here because they want to be able to drive Lamborghinis and drive away in a sunset with a hot babe next to them. You know, that's what people think of when they, you know, come into penny stock, you know, world because that's kind of the, the, like, fake imagery that kind of penny stocks got blown up to. And that's not what it's, you know, meant to be. You're supposed to just, you know, uh, trade just like a regular stock trader. But a lot of penny stocks kind of just got turned into this whole, uh, you know, different, you know, dream world. And if you look for what the hype is, if you look for where people think they're going to make the most money, that is what's probably going to rip. And if we're in there first, we're going to be able to get the most profit out of it. So if we're before the mob, we're going to make the most money. Uh, so how can we understand the mob? Look for the hype. Where does most of the hype come from, guys? Most of the hype is going to come from press releases. That is something you have to understand. Every single morning when I wake up, I look through a lot of different news. I look through news for the about two hours straight, and I look for for uh, certain keywords, and I'm about to show you guys these keywords. And these keywords, whenever you see them in a certain press release, you can automatically assume the stock is going to have a gap up. And if that stock has a gap up, it could definitely lead to a spike. If that stock does not have a spike or a gap up, expect it to definitely you know run maybe right at the start of the day so press releases guys is something that is absolutely crucial that you guys have to understand if you want to trade stocks because this is where the hype comes in so what I want to do real quickly is I want to go over these keywords look for in hot press releases now these this is my personal list of keywords look for in hot press releases we have you know great positive words they're on the positive side guys they're happy makes you smile positive you know, receives, grants, FDA, approval, drug trials, cancer, improvements, benefits, ben a beneficial, agreement, partnership, any large sum of money, investors, billionaire, Carl Icahn, which is a billionaire investor, phase one, phase two, phase three, successful, fast track, breakout, increase, acquire, accepted, new contract, awarded, signs, completes, merger, promising, gain, increase, primary endpoints. This is, you know, this is like the big show right here, guys. You see one of these keywords in a hot press release, you can expect this stock having a gap up or this stock moving pretty big. Now let's apply this. Again, everything I say, I always like to be backed up with some credibility, of course. So let's talk about, you know, what we have been seeing on, in the market the past few days. Well, first things first, let's look at, you know, kind of the biggest rip we have seen this week. What's the biggest rip we have seen this week? If you guys are trading at all, CBLI. This stock has gone from $2 all the way up to today, went all the way up towards around $5.53, as you guys can see. But why was this stock getting this rip? Well, let's just look at CBLI. I actually brought it up on Yahoo Finance before this uh, webinar started. So this is CBLI. You could see today we went on a 46% gain on the day. What got this stock moving? Well, this stock started moving back on April 17th. So if we go back to this, April 17th. This is two days ago. Cleveland Biolabs announces European Medicine Agency positive opinion regarding you know its overall investigational plan. What's your key word, guys? Let's look right here. Number one, positive. Right when I see this, I don't even really have to read the rest of this press release. You know, we're going to go into detail a little bit more right now, but you could see right when I see this word positive, I already know that hey, you know what? This is a this is going to be a nice press release. After I see this word positive. If that's when I break it down, I look into things such as float, I look at the RSI, I see if there's any indicators behind it, but I have a key word. I have a key hype word where I know other people are going to see and they're going to want to push the stock on up. If we look a little bit more into this company, we see what the CEO is saying. We are excited. That's always good if someone says we are, you know, uh, not excited or we are, you know, bummed out. You know, we are excited to receive. So receive, that is also a key word. Number two right here, receives mean the company is gaining something. It's gaining an asset it's gaining a partnership receives means you're always you know getting something so that's always a good keyword so when a company receives something that's what you want to look at so we have positive we have receives a positive a positive opinion encouraging which is always a nice keyword as well and that it, when you put everything together you know CBLI this is what led to this very nice climb and this very nice rip now there is a lot of other indications and you know indicators that go into why CBLI rip but it all started from this press release this press release right here is why the stock got a nice rip you want to look for something a little bit more current you know you maybe say oh CBLI was two days ago let's look at today what was one of uh, the top uh, gainers of actual today uh, and that was, I believe, ARGS. ARGS, we look back, let's just switch back to like the five minute time frame. We see the whole day right here. AGRS or ARGS went from 57 cents all the way up to 82 cents. Let's just look at this, you know, stock. Let's figure out why the stock came out. 
Well, we have a, uh, ARGS came out with this press release with its results on its trial. So basically, if we just click this right, right here and we get taken to the press release on ARGS, we could see right when we get into this a little bit more uh, to, to do the primary efficient endpoints. So we see the word endpoints right here is statistically significant improvement in overall su uh, survival. So we're talking right now the results of its trials. So we have the results of its trials. What is going on with its trials? The primary efficiency endpoint. So number one, what's the first keyword we just ran into? We just ran into our word number 34, endpoint or endpoints. That's a keyword to look for for um, some height to come in. And what is those endpoints? Well, we have statistically significant improvements in overall survival. Let's look at other, what else is here? We have the word improvements. There it is right there. So here are our keywords look for in hot press releases. We have the word, you know, trial on positive. We have significant improvements on a low float stock with a nice gap up. This stock is going to immediately be bringing in some sort of hype. So I'm going into these keywords because this psychologically, you see other traders see these keywords. They are going to start getting very excited. So that's why I definitely wanted to see, uh, talk to you guys about these keywords because you see these keywords traders are going to say oh look it's positive oh look they received FDA approval oh look they have an agreement uh, traders are automatically going to say to themselves I want to get into this play because I know this play is going to be moving on up you know they get excited and that's what you want you know anything you want to get people excited you want to get people up and down dancing having a good time and that's what you know those keywords are really going to make it happen what's exciting also how can we understand the mob what is the mob going to be looking at guys they're going to be looking at what's up in pre market so basically again today you know some of the hotter stocks up in pre-market ARGS this stock was up in pre-market this is something I tell my traders all the time guys um, you know just because something is up in pre-market does not mean it's going to be consistent throughout the whole entire day just because something is up, let's say like 90%, sometimes that means the stock is going to fall at the day. But I do understand that the stock is going to be hot. There's going to be hot volume there. And we come down to psychology, I want to see where all eyes are going to be. The more people playing a certain stock, the better percentage I have to be making money because it's going to be moving. More people playing it, the more it's going to move, the more money I can make. So basically, ARGS. I want to see where the mob's looking. Uh, how am I going to see this? I'm going to look at what's up in pre-market, what's you know moving around, what has the hottest press releases. Honestly, ARGS was a good stock that was up in pre-market a lot. I know a lot of people are going to be you know looking at this play. And I, guys, I work with beginner traders all the time. I work with beginner traders. I work with advanced traders all the time. What I want you guys to understand, probably the number one thing I get all the time is you know we'll see a stock that's up 90% in pre-market, and then you get that rookie trader that comes in. He's just like, boy, oh boy. You know, I know what I'm playing today. Deck, you ready to profit? And then, like, you know, it doesn't happen. He's like, what's going on? You know, the stock crashed at the start of the day or the stock, you know, only went up on a little bit of a rip and then came back on down. But I understand from all the rookie trader perspective, they see something that's, you know, is up super high in, um, in pre-market. They immediately turn towards it. So sometimes that's a good advantage to have and something it's very good to understand that rookie traders, they see something up in pre-market. They're going to probably buy it right at the start of the day and try to move it up. And that's why a lot of times we see things called gap and goes. But a lot of times these gap and goes don't hold hold up because more regular traders know to short these plays. Just a little example, I'll just go over this real quickly. Um, again, I wasn't really going to talk about this too much, but a lot of these stocks that have huge gap ups usually come back down after little morning rips because of the plain fact they're already overbought. So like MCUR had a great you know press release, had a quick little rip you know from 299 all the way up to 323, but you you already know the stock's up like 100%. It already made its run in pre-market. It comes back on down like SEED. Um, you know these are just you know usual examples I give. You know stock went yeah. Yeah, I wanted to show you something because you again as you're going over really good stuff, there was something that just literally made me think that it's such a good example of something about about the gap because you were saying hey sometimes. A stock will gap up, it'll try to go, but then it like the gap and crap, or it'll, you know, revert. There's all sorts of activity once the gap happens. But what I wanted to show was um, in the alert window that you have there, it's called high end of day momentum scanner. Can you right click and select configure and then type in the word uh, in the search? Wait, right, unclick, hold on, go to the advanced button. Yep. Thank you. And put that use advanced config settings from that point on. You want to just have that uh, set. But type in the word gap. Yeah, so do you see there's like these two types of things that we 
kind of track for people already so you can really get into the pattern recognition specifics. Like you can see a gap down that tries to come up but then continues to fall down or a gap up that goes up, stabilizes, and then makes a new high. So there's so many of these things that we've already done because as you know, um, we are constantly communicating with the trading community and it's all at your disposal. And I wanted to just make sure that people knew that part of like what's in here under the hood is not only you guys having to know what to do, but we're constantly reinforcing it programmatically with the right algorithms. They're going to be showing you these setups so that you already know what's happening. Mm, exactly. And, you know, that's a great, you know, part of trade ideas and why I use them, of course, because you guys do. I, I honestly think, you know, you guys are the best at what you do, and I love it. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, but what we have, you know, keep on going on with this, uh, you know, presentation. I was just, you know, trying to let you guys know, just thinking about what other traders think and how rookies think and how that 80% thinks, that mob thinks. Um, and we talked about press releases and those hot keywords to look for in press releases. We talked about what looks exciting because, you know, the excitement's going to bring people. You know, the excitement's what's going to bring people. It's going to get people to say, I want to play this stock because I want to make money. What's up in pre-market? Because sometimes when things are up in pre-market, traders are going to say to themselves, you know, this is going to be the stock that rips. This this is going to be the stock that it takes on off when that's sometimes the case, but it's not always the case. But what I do know is if a stock's up in pre-market, it's definitely going to have volume because it probably has a press release towards it. And a lot of traders are going to be looking at it for that next leg on up, even if it does, you know, come back on down. Um, lastly, guys, make sure if you want to play good stocks, you only play credibility. Now, this is a, a huge pet peeve of mine. It's huge, guys, is that the plain fact you have to play credible stocks. And if you don't play credible stocks, this is when you're going to get caught up in pump and dumps. And this is when you are going to get caught up in, um, you know, just email blasts and caught up in, you know, stupid hype that you really should not be in. And that's what it really comes down to me, guys, is when I say I only play stocks that I know has a certain chart pattern. And I play about six different chart patterns. You know, I probably, you know, play around 15, but my go-to is probably six different chart patterns. Um, you know, all my traders know them. I went over them a lot last uh, time I was here. Uh, red to green moves, that's my favorite. Uh, Mid-candle breakouts, $1 breakouts, bull flags, ascending triangles, descending triangles triangles, anything along those lines, we have to have credibility. So why did, you know, we played AGRS a little bit earlier today, or uh, yeah, earlier today, but why did we play it? It has the credibility behind it. We have a uh, nice press release stating that it has, you know, statistically significant improvements in its overall survival for its trials. There's a reason for that stock to be going up. When you sometimes get into this penny stock world, Sometimes you see stocks that are moving up for no apparent reason really, you know, at all. There's people that are saying rumors. Sometimes you go on a message board and there's that one guy who's like, hey, my uncle is part of the company and he knows a guy who said this is going to go on up. Everyone buy it. I'm buying 10,000 shares. It's going to the moon. Ow! You know, something like that. You know, and that's not credible, you know, at all. You know, that's not what you want at all. So, you know, make sure you're playing credible stocks. And that's what it really comes down to. You play credible stocks, um, you're going to be doing a lot better. If you You don't just play, you know, hype, and you don't just hop in for no reason. Basically, a little bit of an example, uh, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day today, we saw SKLN starting to get a little bit of hype. SKLN went on a nice little pop. There is some rumors going on at SKLN, but it was a stock I just didn't want to chase because it went from 220 up to 260, then it went from 260 all the way back down to 235. Didn't come out with that strong press release yet. It still it could potentially come out with that strong press release, but still, you know, I, I just something, you know, just because you see a little hype go into a play doesn't mean you, you trade it. If I traded every single stock, guys, if I traded every single stock that I saw move, you know, and that's what some people do. I would lose immediately. I would lose my account so quickly because stocks are going to move, guys, and sometimes people can't handle that, that discipline where they say, oh, you know what, I saw that stock moving and I didn't make my money yet today, so I, this is why I'm hopping in on it. You know, that's not what you want to do. Wait for your play. I talk about it all the time. I talked about it a lot today. Uh, I'm going to be going over it in a little bit. Talking about being a stock sniper, waiting for your play, and all the traders in my chat room right now who are uh, in here, they know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I talk about uh, just waiting and sitting back and today we sat back for about 15 minutes before we actually traded because we waited for a play to develop. 
So only play credibility, guys, and that's extremely important. I just want to make sure you guys get that. And credibility comes from a chart pattern or it comes from a, a press release that you can see. Not what someone else has said, not what some guy on Twitter wrote, not what your you know master did and you know bought, but what you can see as your credibility. You know, that's the, what I really want you guys to understand. Next up, the mob will always be late. Once you find your play, stick with your guns. Do not chase just because a play is moving. And that's something I really want you guys to understand. The mob is that 80% of people, guys, who are going to fail. And again, that's the penny stock basically majority right there. And you know what? The, that majority, those people are going to probably fail. So if you find a play, if you find credibility, if you find everything set up, you know, very nicely, and you say to yourself, you know what, this has, you know, the indicators I need, you know, this has basically the setups that I like, I definitely want you to stick to your guns on this. And I'm going to go over that in a little bit talking about uh, my AGRS trade that I went over today. There were other stocks that were going on some nice rips. There were other stocks going on some nice plays. But the plain fact is I stuck with my guns on this and I said to myself, hey, you know what? This is going to be where the mob's going to move into eventually. And if I could predict that, I can predict where the stock's going to be, you know, moving up to. Um, so do not chase a play just because something is moving. And that's what I really wanted to go into basically on my last, um, you know, talking about on my last slide is just because a stock moves on up doesn't mean it's worth getting into. Yes, a stock moves up, you can make money on it, but is that worth it? it? I know people who just buy stocks because it's moving up, and you say to yourself, why are you in the stock? And they're like, it's moving up, you know, I wanna make money. Do your research, figure out what's going on, and then, you know, you can go into a stock. If it's credible, it should go up. If it's not credible, don't be surprised if it turns around and, you know, hurts you. Because as I said, you know, those uncredible plays, or even those credible plays, sometimes they get very trendy. You know, it's like, uh, I wanna make money. W uh, one person starts selling, then the next person, then the next person, then it turns into a bad wave. So do not chase the play just because it's moving. So I want to talk about my play today, guys. And I want to talk about ARGS versus SNGX today. And I want, to, I want you guys to see, I'm going to show you guys firsthand how the mob moves. And basically an easy way to uh, understand the mob, this is from uh, Finding Nemo. I always give childish examples, guys. I'm one big kid. I'm sorry. But uh, we have Finding Nemo, if you guys have ever seen this. And basically, if you guys have, you know, it's like the seagulls. You know, it's one big, huge group of seagulls that are all fighting over the first little thing. They're all like, mine, mine. You know, it's, it's just one big, stupid, you know, group of seagulls all trying to fight uh, all over the place. And that's what I kind of, uh, that's what I see, you know, the mob as basically all these people showing up late to the party uh, you know have not really t have any clue what's going on but they're all trying to make money so basically let's go over our ARGS and SNGX today and that's one of the top things I really want to do right now um, and I want to compare the two and you can easily see how the mob shifts between them so the first thing I want to go over is uh, SNGX. I'm going to turn off pre-market and I'm going to turn off the post-market right here. And I just want you guys to really understand about, you know, watching the mob shift. And again, we are in the penny stock market. The penny stock market, you know, these stocks get easily manipulated or they, these stocks get easily pushed around just because of the pure fact that the people want to be making money. So SNGX right now, guys, we opened up at $4. This stock did come out with a press release as well. This stock did come out with a press release. I don't want to ignore that at all. So it did come out with a press release. So there was credibility uh, behind it. Uh, so 11 hours ago, uh, we can see that it had efficient results um, with, you know, whatever its vaccine research was. So again, you know, I'm not, you know, bashing. SNGX at all, but I'm saying uh, watch how the mob basically shifts. So we open up on again a gap up. Gap up's going to definitely bring in a lot of attention. And you can see, you know, the stock starts moving up, moving up, moving up. My number one stock I wanted to focus on today was A A R G S. You know, this and I'm actually going to bring it over here. I'm going to put A R G S over here. And I just want to, uh, I'm going to compare the two side by side so you guys can see exactly what I wanted. So here's ARGS and let's go back to SNGX. And I want you guys to see exactly how the mob shift right here because it's pretty funny. And it's when you realize this stuff, you know, in the actual market, you know, it's pretty cool to see. So basically SNGX opened up guys. ARGX is my play today. This is what I played. I banked $280 on the day today off ARGX. But SNGX, what did I have going on? Um, I thought this was a better press release. I thought it was a better chart set up, you know, together. I thought it was more predictable. Uh, I thought the mob would definitely move in here after, you know, what's one of my favorite patterns that I taught last time, a red to green move. A red to green move is when a stock breaks through the opening point. The opening point right here, guys, is 64 cents. So when a stock goes from the red side to the green side, we usually get volume to come on through. So me personally, I saw ARGS and I said to myself, this has a credible press release. I think the mob is going to move up through here. So basically a lot of 
traders, which again, you know, if they are respectable traders who definitely, you know, know the credibility, SNGX, that was a good play. So basically everyone leaned a little bit towards SNGX. As SNGX went on up, ARGS came back on down. You know why? Because the mob was pushing this stock up because this stock was currently hot. This stock was currently hot. And basically when you see a stock go from $4 all the way up to like 425 at the start of the day, these, you know, flock of seagulls right here, they're going to say, you know, mine, 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 looking for that profit. And they're going to, you know, keep pushing it up, pushing it up, pushing it up. Now real traders, you know, what's going on basically in the market, they're going to say, hey, you know what? We're at 450, natural resistance. I'm going to lock up a little bit of profit. They start locking in their profit. Notice at the same exact time, this starts going down. This starts going down at around 940. Guess what time this stock starts going on up? This stock starts going up at around 940. You know why? Because as the mob starts moving down over here, the uh, the mob goes, I, what's next? You know, I want to make money. That's when it starts moving up over here. And it's really funny how this, it happens all the time, guys. And this is how you predict stocks. You don't have to chase the first thing that runs. But you can see as this stock moves on up, this stock moves on down. As SNGX starts moving on down, ARGS starts moving on up because this flock of seagulls guys they're hungry all they care about is making money they're going to chase they're going to be late but us personally who know what's going on you know the people that understand the actual market we're going to know hey ARGS if it makes this red to green move and this is what I was saying to our traders today I was saying if it makes the red to green move we'll make money if it doesn't make the red to green move you know what we're not going to hop into it so we're not going to lose money the only thing we could do today is make money we might not get the trade on ARGS but if it does come up we're going to make money so ARGS starts moving on up because the mob starts fading out here. Now they're money hungry. Now they're saying, what's next? As this fades out, volume builds up. Look how a volume fades out here. Volume builds up here because the mob, the people that don't know what's going on, we know it's a U-shaped pattern. The mob doesn't really know that. They just understand, oh, it's, you know, they're money hungry looking for an easy, you know, chase or some hype runs. Uh, this is when this stock looks and goes on we go on a nice pop and we went on a nice run all the way from uh 60 cents all the way up towards 81 cents and it was a very simple easy play and it was beyond easy because the mob basically told us okay this is what's going on they were all leaning towards SNGX at first and as SNGX went up uh, ARGS got no love so it came on down now traders which I definitely understand there's 450 natural resistance if you guys don't know what resistance is there's three different types of resistance a little bit of a quick lesson uh, we have natural resistance we have detailed resistance and we have patch chart history resistance uh, every 25 cents in the the market starting at $1, $1, $1.25, um, $1, $1.25, $1.50, 175 $2, $2.25, $2.50, $2.75, $3. $2 Everything along those lines, guys, that's called natural resistance every 25 cents. Notice as the stock comes up to $4.50, it falls. Notice as the stock comes up to $5, it falls. That's natural resistance. So basically, traders who know what's going on in the market, they start locking up profits at $4.50. You know, anyone who you know came in late, you know, they're probably going to be ending up losing. Now, you know, traders are understanding, okay, you know what? This is getting a red to green move. That's where we were waiting for. I didn't touch anything else. I had to wait about uh, like 15 minutes before, you know, my play started developing. But I knew, hey, you know what? We're starting to move on up. SNGX starting to move on down. Mobs coming on in. I got in right in the 60, uh, 60 cent area, ripped all the way up to 81 cents. I had 4,000 shares. You know, it made a nice, easy killing this morning. Um, and that's what it's all about. And a lot of our traders did as well. Um, it, if you can put in the right orders, I actually had a little bit of trouble, you know, myself actually getting my limit order in, but that's a completely different story. The, the main thing is I'm pumped and I'm super excited that, you know, our traders just absolutely banked this morning, including myself, you know, which was, you know, awesome to see. But that was just, you know, a very psychological, you know, very easy play. Of course, you have to know your chart patterns. Of course, you have to know what's going on. You know, upper shadow right here indicates a trend reversal. Uh, you know, that's a different lesson, of course. But just seeing the, the plain fact that, you know, it moves up here, it moves down. Then it starts moving down here. Mob shifts because they're money hungry. And that's where we get our nice pop. So I really wanted to talk about you know, just how you can see how the mob moved. Because I know I'm going into a lot of um, you know, I know I'm talking about the mob right now. I'm talking about, you know, psychology, uh, but I, I'm a visual learner. That's how, that's how I learn. I think it's awesome, you know, stock trading. That's why I think stock trading is so perfect for me. I get to look at pictures all day. You know, that's all it is. I get to look at pictures all day. And uh, it, I know when I'm talking, you guys may not get exactly what I'm saying. So it's very important that I, you know, throw an example in there for you guys uh, to see. And you guys can really focus on this type of stuff every single day as well you know, understanding where the mob is going to be moving. Now, uh, something I do want to touch up on as well is talking about just, you know, indicators. And uh, 
when I talk about indicators, guys, um, I want to talk about you know why I think they're personally important. I do use the 50-day moving average, the 200-day moving average, and the 13 EMA. That's all I use. Uh, I know a lot of traders that kind of use a lot, you know, a ton of indicators uh, that it kind of covers up their screen, and it's really not you know worth it. Uh, but a lot of traders come up to me and they say. Why do I use the 50-day? Why do I use the 200-day? Why do I use the 13 EMA? And honestly, these are the most popular. And that's you know very important that you guys understand that that these are the most popular indicators. You could say, hey, you know, I have traders sometimes that are like, oh, guys, everyone, you know, watch out, we're coming up to the uh, like 100 and you know 27th moving average, uh, and I'm like, that doesn't matter. No one cares about that. You know why? Because no one else is using that. The only reason I use indicators at all is because I know other other traders are using that and if I know other traders are using that there's going to be some sort of buying and selling at that area if it's coming down to it it's gonna hold up some sort of support if it's going up to it it's gonna hold up as resistance these lines guys they're just another area of support and resistance and the only reason I use them is because it's going to help me understand where other people are going to buy where other people are going to sell it's going to help me understand hey you know what uh, this could be a bounce play right here because I know psychologically speaking people are going to see this as a floor or a ceiling and they're going to buy or they are going to sell. That's the only reason I use 50 day, 200 day, 13 EMA. They are the most popular uh, indicators in the game and again I'm going to again show you guys exactly what I mean. So if you just go to uh, stockcharts.com real quick <laughs> you uh, immediately get the 200-day uh, moving average and the 50-day moving average. No matter what you do, you know you get it right when you type in a chart. You're going to get the 50-day moving average in blue. You're going to get the 200-day moving average in red. And uh, I always add the 13 EMA. But you know why do you always get the 50-day and the 200-day moving average? They're default. You know that's what everyone uses. I don't care if someone is using you know the the 70 you know eighth moving average. No one else uses that, so it's not going to have a big effect. All you want to use is the ones that have the biggest effect towards them. So when I'm looking at this, guys, um, I, I want to see, okay, where are these stocks going to move? So I just want to give you guys this little example of what it really looks like. Now I want to break it down uh, to show you guys, you know, each one personally. So right now I'm going to set up the 50-day moving average. So this blue line right here indicates the 50-day moving average. First one I want to show you guys is MYOS. So I'm going to go MYOS. I'm going to bring this back on up, and what I want you guys to notice is how the 50-day moving average holds up as some sort of resistance and some sort of support. Way back here it starts. The stock spikes on up. I can expect selling at the 50-day moving average. Spikes again. I can expect some sort of selling. I can expect some sort of selling. Now when we break above it, where could I expect an easy bounce play? You know, I can expect an, an easy bounce play at 277 all the way up towards 401. And when it comes back down, I can expect another bounce play from 295 all the way up towards you know 393 eventually it does crack now it holds as resistance but I want you guys to understand it's just another area psychologically where people are going to see and uh, see as basically a floor or a ceiling if it's above it uh, which is going to hold as support or resistance the next one I want to show you guys is going to be ADPT ADPT notice how this thing is an app absolute you know resistance line it can't break above it it's not breaking above it psychologically people are going to sell at this area because they think it is holding up as a very strong mark then it comes back on down we have a nice big spike where can that spike get held up 349 you know is that a is or it actually came all the way up towards around 372 because it was at 372 at this time but you know is that is that anything crazy that the stock turned around at 372 no it came up to the 50-day moving average that's an area where traders are going to sell at I look at NADL I look at NADL today, guys. We had this on my, our, my watch list today. Why do I have NADL? Because the stock is coming down to a 50-day moving average. I could expect a bounce play today. We talked about the stock today in my chat room. We talked about, um, you know, put it on our morning newsletter, watch for a bounce play, because of the pure fact, psychologically, traders are going to be buying at this area. I don't care about a 78 or, a, you know, a 328th moving average. Stick to the most popular, because the most popular are the ones that traders are going to use the most, and that is going to have the biggest impact. Impact. So you want to look at those. Now if I moved over to the 200 day moving average, simple enough. Let me just switch this out. It's going to still be a blue line. Uh, so I don't want you guys to be confused. Usually it'll be a red line, but I want you guys to understand, okay, this is the 200 day moving average. So let's look at some examples using the 200 day moving average. IDXG. IDXG guys we can see that uh, we run up to the 200 day moving average come back down we break through it we get a nice pop you know when we crack underneath it resistance 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 every time we come up to this area it's just nice to know hey you know what we could definitely be seeing some selling coming on up 
same exact thing. Again, I always like to just back up all my statements with credibility. DFFN. DFFN, we broke through, we get a nice rip. But if we can't break through, it holds us resistance. Resistance comes up resistance. You can just expect a selling. It could be a random area, you know, like 688. You know, that's an extremely random area. There's nothing on the chart. There's no, you know, a natural resistance at 688. It's just because it's the 50, uh, the 200-day moving average, excuse me. Um, and that's just another area where you can always look to uh, always look to sell or you can always look for a possible play because psychologically other traders are going to see that and they're going to want to buy or sell. Last one I just want to show you guys, EBIO. EBIO, as you can see, resistance, resistance, resistance. You know, it's the same story, different chapter. Uh, last thing I want to go over is EXP, which is, again, the 13 EMA, um, which is probably not as used as much as the uh, 200 day or 50 day moving average, but it is used a good amount. And again, it's just my last indicator I want you guys to understand on the psychological aspect. Anything above the 13 EMA is considered bullish. Anything below the 13 EMA is considered bearish. So let's say I buy the stock right here at 240. I can you know, hold the stock all the way on up. I'll hold it as long as it doesn't go underneath this line, I'm, I can hold that as long as I want. Because this is what I like to call the flexible trend line. Um, anything is above it, it's bullish. Anything below it is bearish. So basically, again, if you are buy, if you short this stock right when it goes underneath here short it short it short it. even if you have a big gap up right here keep shorting keep shorting keep shorting right when it crosses over that's when you sell you want to buy it right here just hold it you got buy 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 you could have a big red day you know what you're still on the bullish side traders are still going to see this now you're going to go bullish 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 now it cracks underneath sell it you went from one dollar all the way up towards seven dollars didn't get scared out on any sort of red days just because you held the 13 ema so that's really one of the main things I want you guys to just understand, you know, how you can also take, uh, you know, your psychology to uh, taking it to chart patterns or different indicators if you guys would like to. So basically, you know, this recap, guys, on you know, nearly everything I talked about today is, yes, it's important to study chart patterns. You know, yes, it is very important to study chart patterns. It's important to study, you know, different press releases. You have your keywords now that you guys can watch that are going to bring in hype. You have to study a lot of different things. But something you can't, you know, surpass is going to be the psychology of not only being confident in yourself, but taking yourself outside of your body and really thinking, how is other traders going to see this play? How is the majority of traders going to see the play that you are looking at? Are they going to see the same thing you are? Or are they going to be leaning towards something that's maybe a little bit more exciting. Again, guys, penny stocks, they just want excitement. We just want excitement. People want that easy cash that's going to blow on up. Um, and so something that you're looking at, the mob, or the mob, the majority, they might be looking at something a little different. So that's why it's extremely important to not think about only yourself, but think about others, because others are what's going to move the majority. The others are going to buy stocks and sell stocks. The others, the majority, they're going to you know, push the stock up, push the stock down. Stocks do not move their own, guys. People move stocks. If they buy it, they move up. If they sell them, it moves on down. You are one person in the stock market. So it's very important that you understand the majority and not just yourself. And that's what the main point I wanted to get off of, guys. And if you can understand the mob, understand how this mob works this flock of seagulls guys you guys are going to be a very very you know help, help you guys become very predictable in the market on what the market's going to do because as I t tell my traders all the time it's not about uh, being uh, it's not about making money in the market on one day or making, you know, a huge amount of money on one day and losing every day. It's about being consistent in the market. You know, I say a monkey can make money in the market. Yes, but they could probably only make it one day. You know, if you have a thousand dollar win, but then you lose the rest of the month, that thousand dollar win means absolutely nothing. Be consistent in the market, guys. I'd rather lock in 200, 250 dollars every single day for five days straight rather than win one big day and lose the rest. You know, that's not how I'm going to be consistent. That's not how I'm going to be able to do this full time. So when it comes down to it, the number one thing I'm uh, number one thing I think of when I sit down in my seat is where is the mob going to go? Where's the majority? Where's the hype at right now? And where I can find that hype is where you can find me before that hype comes on in. And that's what you really have to think of as yourself, guys. And again, I'm showing you guys this because I want you guys to make money. I want you guys to profit. So be ahead of the mob, never be part of the mob. And that's kind of the transition you have to make uh, as yourself from going from a rookie trader in that 80% to being in the top 20% that are going to be consistently profiting, not just making money on a chase every now and then, but consistently making money, noticing where the mob is and saying to yourself, hey, you know what? 
I see, I see right here that you know the mob is pushing this on up. Traders are selling right here. Now it's my time. You know I'm in early. Let the mob push me on up. You know let those people who are chasing stocks uh, rip my profit on up, and you know I'm gonna lock in. Then you know they keep pushing up, and you know what? This fades on off. Now the mob you know goes to a different stock. It's just one big you know uh, just one big uh, just the whole stock family. You really just have to you know figure out, and you know that's what uh, it really comes down to. But other than that though, guys. Um, I just want to say thank you for, uh, you know, tuning in for, you know, this Trade Ideas webinar. And as always, I just want to say thank you and I appreciate your time and spending this last hour with me. I know how, you know, time is your biggest asset as a trader in life. And I just, you know, really ex uh, uh, respect uh, that you guys are uh, with us today. So uh, as always, I just want to throw in my last little, you know, points. If you guys would like to sign up to my chat room, we do do this every day, live lessons every day, over 500 traders. And we do have a free two-week trials for all new members. So basically, you know, nothing to lose. Also, again, thank you to Dan uh, and Trade Ideas ideas for having me. Dan? <laughs> hey, thank you, Sean. This is Scott. Um, I wanted to remind the audience that if they have any questions for you, they can reach out to you directly. What's the best email for them to contact you? Uh, DeckmarTrades at gmail.com. DeckmarTrades at gmail.com. I'll make sure to include that in the follow-up email tonight. I'll send yeah, you I'll even type uh, that out right here. So if anyone needs me, you guys can hit me up, guys. More yep. than happy to help. And well, I should have the recording uh, uh, converted and up tonight, and then uh, I'll send everyone an email. And uh, thank you, Sean, for the presentation. Uh, very active crowd tonight, good registration, so we should uh, get some more questions about this after afterwards. Uh, thank you, and thank you all for attending. If you have any questions about trade ideas, it, shoot us an email, info at trade-ideas.com, as always. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. Thank Thanks. Thank you guys for having me. Bye-bye.